according to Boyle's law, pressure and volume are inversely proportional, provided temperature and the number of particles is constant. If we plot pressure and volume on a graph, it will give an inverse relationship, a reciprocal graph, which is y equals 1 over x, or similar to this graph uh, that you would have come across in maths. Now, I want to show that the pressure and volume are inverse version, that this particular graph does follow the inverse relationship. So what I'll do is I'll pick out at least three sets of data and check if that PV is a constant. So the first set of data, this looks like it's 70 and there's 20. So if I multiply the pressure and volume 70 times 20, I get 140. OK, and I'm going to check if that's constant with another set of data. So next one, that looks like it's just over there. So it's around 47. So if you do 47 times 30, you get 1410, which is quite similar to 1400 so you know let's try another set of data so you can next one is 40 times 35 and that does give us 1400 so because those are all very similar or they're virtually the same then we can conclude that um this does follow inverse relation i need to write that conclusion so these numbers are similar so yeah, inverse relation, inverse proportional. Or you can say it's constant, therefore they're inverse proportional. Okay, describe and explain the graphical method that could be used to show the relation that the relationship does follow the inverse relationship, because this could be an exponential decrease. So what we need to do is we need to plot a graph that gives us a straight line if it is an inverse relationship. So if we think about it, you can write P as the constant times 1 over V. Okay, so if we compare this to the equation Y equals MX, and I plot on the x-axis 1 over V instead of V, and the y-axis I plot pressure, I should get a straight line with no y-intercept like this. So this, if, the, if we do get a straight line like this, you can conclude that it is inverse relationship, otherwise you'd get a curve. What would the PV diagram look like for the same set of uh, setup, but a higher constant temperature and or with more particles? So what we do is we pick up a particular volume. So at that volume, if the temperature had been higher or the number of particles higher, then we'd expect the pressure to be more because there's more particles uh, then of course there's going to be more frequent collisions or if the temperature is higher then the collisions are also going to be more frequent or not only that they'll be moving faster so the, they'll collide with the wall at a higher velocity as well so a graph would look like this if it's high temperature or higher vol um, number of particles and the higher the temperature the more higher up the graph would look like and they will never touch the x or y axis okay what does area under a PV diagram represent? Okay, so to think about this, we need to look at this piston at the bottom here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compress it. So it's got a cross section area of A. And when I compress it, I've reduced the volume by delta V by moving a distance delta S. Okay, so this has left the gas inside at pressure P. So the area under a graph, you can think of it as if you chop it up into slices, it's gonna be very thin slices, it will be delta V times the pressure at that point. So the area is going to be P times delta V. Now pressure is force over area. And the change in volume, as, in, as you can see in this case, is going to be the cross section area times the change in distance. As with all of this, that's the volume there. So if I substitute those in, I get P, so I'm sorry, no, no, so I get, instead of P, I get F over A times A delta S. The A's cancel out, and I get F times delta S, which is a force times the distance you moved in the direction of the force, which is the definition of work done. 
So the area on this graph here represents the work done when you compress or expand, expand the gas. So it depends on which direction you're going. So if you're going from B to A, in this case, what you're doing is you're reducing the volume. So if you're reducing the volume, it's you who's doing work on the gas. You're pushing on this piston and doing work on it and reducing the, um, the pressure. In other, another case, if the gas is expanding on its own from A to B, it's expanding, then it's the gas that's doing the work. It's the gas is pushing on the piston and expanding. Okay, this diagram kind of shows how some engines work. So they, they have this loop in a, in a PV diagram. So from, for example, stage two to three, what's happened is work was done by the gas and the work done by the gas in expanding was all the area that's between the under that that curve all of this so that's the work done by the gas when it expanded now then when the heat is extracted well the volume didn't change so there was no work done in that stage and then what we've done is we're going from four to one in that case what we're doing is us doing the work because we're compressing the gas so we need to put energy into the system. So we're putting this much energy into the system by doing work. And then it go, you go back to two without changing the volume again, so which, which means no work is done in that stage from one to two. So the overall, the energy that's been released when this cycle happened is this.